not the ones I want. But that's okay. Okay, so the way swap casting works is um, quite simply like this, right? So what you're doing is you are using an animation, but you're using a different skill, right? So for instance, let's actually grab the paladin because he's a great example of it. For instance, here is the charge animation, right? And the problem with the charge animation is it gets stuck. You can hear there where it goes like really fast. That burns all your mana really quickly, right? It's not a good animation and it can get like laggy. It can get caught where he like runs in place and stuff. I don't know if it'll do it with this. Try and do like, it's hard to get the exact stuff, but you know, he'll like get that right there and stuff, right? It's just not a good animation. So what we want to do instead is we want to improve that. Oh my God, the skills are all messed up here. Okay, well, I'll set them up anyways. So I'm going to want to change my, my uh, charge animation and we're instead going to have it be the blessed hammer animation, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the, the thing that I want. I'm going to swap my weapons and then on the swap back, I'm going to press the charge button one frame after I press the weapon swap, right? So I swap my weapons back to the main hand that I want, but in, but I press C at the same time, one frame after, right? So you press weapon, W, and then whatever you want, the skill you actually are gonna use. So right now the game is using charge, but is using the blessed hammer animation, which then gives me the ability to have a clean charge animation where I can just charge around. And I don't have to worry about dealing with all of the charge bugginess or anything like that, right? So this is the most classic example of it that we use. The hammers don't do anything. You'll notice these, these hammers, they don't hit. Right? These hammers are not hammers. They are purely a visual effect. You use the mana of charge as well. The game thinks you're charging. It's only the animation that's not being used. Okay. Now let's go to our barbarian. So you can use this in all sorts of funny ways. Right? So cold and damp under the earth. So right now I am leaping. But instead of leaping, I am using the whirlwind animation. No one should ever so this is me just leaping. I'm not actually whirlwinding. Right? And I can actually leap through. Because I'm just leaping over the wall. <laughs> but it looks like I'm just... Walking through, right? <laughs> so we're, we're just phasing through the gates right now. And obviously this is leap. So I can stun and do all the knockback effects that leap has by just spinning in place. Right. So that's a fun one as well. Now, on our sorceress, you can see we can also overwrite, uh, let's say we just want to do this, teleporting. Oops. So now I can teleport using the ID animation. So you see me raise my hands to identify something, but I'm teleporting. And this is always super creepy because the ID animation makes no noise, whereas the teleport animation does.
So you just get this really creepy whatever. Now, something that is really interesting about this is that, let's say, look how slow this is, right? My, my attack animation is, is quite slow. So, I actually, when I do this, and I teleport using normal attack, I'm actually slowing down my teleport. This is the one really crazy thing about this bug, is that it uses the new animation, but it also uses the new animation's breakpoint. So if, if you are using a spell that usually uses cast rate, but you use a spell on top of it that uses attack speed, it will now use attack speed and vice versa. So, what this means... Oh, oops, hold up. What this means... is the following. Okay, and sure, <clears throat> man, I don't have enough mana, uh, let's take out more points. Okay, we'll go like that. So what this means is I can do demons and beasts crazy things like this so let me do this number so cold and damp under okay. the earth so this should be interesting so now I'm going to build up frenzy charges on this Barbarian, so he's going to get really fast attack speed, right? And then, watch how fast I can teleport using the double swing animation as my teleport. Are you ready? This is gonna be... We're using attack speed now for teleporting. Right, and I ran, I ran out of mana, but <laughs> we teleport so much faster than our normal teleport speed because I'm using the double swing attack animation, which is super fast. Good day. Uh, yeah, obviously we don't have a ton of mana here. I mean, we could just take all this out put all of it in here and and now we can you know showcase a little better but this is this is a a super interesting thing and if I had items that gave me even faster attack speed and things like that the faster my attack speed is right the faster I will be able to teleport. So now I'm just a teleporting machine that teleports really fast. So. That is, uh, that is how swap casting works. Oops, wrong character. Put it back. So it's really interesting. Um, the use cases of it are all different. Okay, so when we're speed running, the we can go kind of on a character by character basis right here, right? For the Amazon, I'm going to actually change up and I'm going to swap cast 
her throw versus her her regular attack. Okay, so look at how fast her regular attack is. Now look at her throw. Right? Hit, 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 hit. Throw, throw, throw. Right? Th her throw is slower. So what you want to do is you do this. And now we're throwing at the speed of our regular attack. So now I don't have to do this long extended throw. Instead, I can just do throws off a regular attack, and that's going to speed things up. So that's the first way that we abuse with this character, right? Is we speed up at the start with that. You get invisible thrown, ja uh, thrown jabs. Okay. The second way that we abuse this character... Let me get a... This character has a jaw rune, right? Oh. Um, the second way that we abuse this character is by charge strike, essentially, in the later section, right? So, obviously, uh, charge strike is a skill that we, we all love, right? And adore. And so, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to use the throw animation. Or we're going to use... Hold on, wait. Char we want charge strike for, yeah. So we're going to have charge strike. It should be like this. No, now we're just throwing. We want charge strike underneath. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I got to remember it. Uh, so we want to actually be using charge strike, but we're going to be using the throw animation. So you can see if your count is going down that you didn't set it up right. There we go. So now I'm using the throw animation. I'm not actually throwing anything, but I have charge strike actually being used. So I don't have to stand there and actually fight stuff. I can actually go away from it, and I'm now using charge strike while being away from them. So this is extremely useful because you can use this on the other side of walls. Um, you can use this all over the place, right? So let's go to Inner Cloister. See if we can, like, find a wall between us, right? I can, like, come here. And I can do this. And so now we're standing with this wall between us, but I'm charge striking them. So this is another great place or another great thing that you use. Um, do you lock it in? Yeah, it's locked in. It only changes when you weapon swap or you change your skill again. So we, we can do this against Diablo. We can do this against Bale. We can do this against Duriel. And then we can, of course, bug Duriel so he gets stuck running into a spot. Um, all of that is great. What we also want to do against Duriel, and this is very kind of specific, uh, and let me go and just make room real fast. What we also like to do against Bale, or against Duriel, excuse me. Are there any bows I can use here? Perfect. Is once again abusing the attack rating. Or attack speed. So here's... Okay, let's go to somewhere without monsters. Okay. So here's our normal attack speed, which is great. This is all fine and dandy, and this would be a great way to just deal with um, and attack uh, Duriel or something. But let's say we want an exploding arrow, arrow Duriel, but he's slowing us because he has his Holy Freeze aura, right? Well, all of a sudden, our attack speed is going to slow down. So what we can do is we can do this, and it's the same idea like before. We're going to use the cast speed, because Tome of Identity and Tome of TP are a cast speed, right? 
And so we're going to use this when we're attacking Duriel. So now, even though we're using her cast speed, it basically looks like this. Let me do a text real fast. Attack speed greater than cast speed greater than attack speed while frozen slash chilled. This is basically our formula right here. So in any case where I can just attack without being frozen, using attack speed is best. In any case where I'm going to be frozen or chilled, using my cast speed from something like Tome of Identity or Tome of TP, right? We could do the same thing here. Notice that I'm not casting a TP and I'm using mana. That's because I'm shooting exploding arrows right now. Right? Boom. I'm shooting these arrows at these ladies. So you can do this against Duriel. That way you can shoot Duriel faster than you would while you're frozen or chilled. So the Amazon has a lot of swap casting. You have swap casting at the start when you're just throwing instead of um, hitting. So you want to use the hit animation. You have swap casting at Duriel when you're using when you're chilled and you want to uh, attack faster. And then you have swap casting with charge strike later on just to keep your distance from things, especially Diablo and Bale. It's a lot faster fight. So that is the Amazon. She probably has the most swap casting just in terms of different spots. The assassin swap casting is something that we actually use right at the start. So I'll go ahead and just grab this character. And we'll go ahead and... I don't have fire blast? Okay. Okay, so you have fire blast right at the start. And we'll get rid of this. And okay, that should be good. Um, so what we're going to be doing is basically the difference between our hand when we're attacking with fire blast and not. So let me get fire blast over here and then let me get normal attack, okay? So what I wanna do is I want to use the normal attack animation for fire blast. So first, here's just my fire blast, okay? This is now my fire blast with normal attack. Notice how much faster that is. right so a barehanded just when she's just punching away it is extremely fast so this is me using fire blast once again notice that my mana is going down so now i can cast fire blast so much faster at the start right and we've got way more fire blast cast coming in as opposed to, that's so much slower. It's like double the speed almost. So you're using the assassin to use your normal attack over fire blast and you use that for the start. Because it's just so much faster when she just has a fist than uh, otherwise, right? Then you can also swap cast with her. Um, let's see, where else would you really want to be swap casting with her? In a normal run, that's probably all that you're going to be swap casting is right at the start there. Because after that, once you've gotten past that, um, you're then just going to get into getting more attack speed. And then you're going to be using these traps and stuff and it's just not as big of a deal, right? So not really a thing there. You can definitely swap cast with like Dragon Talon, right? This isn't something in a speed run, but this is just knowledge overall. So when you have a maxed out Dragon Talent, it's four kicks, right? So four kicks right. takes a while. Let's go to Tundra and let's go find a monster to kick. Right? Look at how long that took. Right? And especially... Right? It's just like so long to do all of the kicks because she goes kick, 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 kick. So what you can do instead is you can... Let's go Nightmare. That'll be better. Um, you can swap cast just a normal attack on top of this. Right? Oops. Didn't mean to do that. So you can swap cast a normal attack 
on top of your dragon talon. And so now, I get all the kicks, but I'm not locked in the animation. So this is a great way to avoid animation lock, right? Kick, 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 kick. All that happens right, right there. And I'm not locked in it, so I don't have to worry about that. I can always back off. So this is a, a great way to simply avoid having to be stuck there, and then you can't run away, right? Oh, you're taking damage, but you're just stuck. It's awful. So that's useful there. That's also useful on the Paladin if you're a Zealot, right? And you don't want to get stuck in the four Zealot swings. You can do the same thing. Put a normal attack there. You hit once. You can run around. You're still going to be getting those hits. Um, Necromancer does not swap cast. There's just no use on the character um, that we know of as of now. Barbarian, you can swap cast a maul with a war cry so let me go here let me gamble good day what you need. let's get ourselves a maul I, mean, I guess any two-handed weapon would really be fine right nice we got a cruel weapon jeez cruel battle scythe it's amazing. Uh, okay, and... Yeah, we'll get to Sorceress here soon. We'll just finish out with that. Okay, so what I can do here... Is I can get a skill like Battle Cry. Because remember, this is a character who has we can use the cast speed so instead of the swinging i can go to battle cry which is a little faster and also is an effect by affected by being cold right and so we can do that same thing where we actually want to have this and we want to use the battle cry, but we want to use a regular animation. So let me change this to that and that. And now, notice I'm not using mana. That's because I'm actually swinging right now. I'm actually swinging my weapon at things and killing them. This is me attacking. But this isn't affected by cold or frozen, right? So cold and freeze do not affect this at all. And I don't have to worry about, um, I mean, that's the main thing, right? Is if I'm cold or frozen and it's using my cast rate. So let's say I get an enigma and a bunch of different cast speed things to speed up my cast speed. Well, I'm gonna be attacking faster then. Holy Freeze doesn't affect it, exactly. So it's actually super nice for that. Right? Um, so that's really the use the barb has for that. And then I told you about, like, you can use double swing animation, especially after a frenzy on top of something. And in a speed run, you are correct, we, can, we will use um, the frenzy... Oops. Uh, the double swing animation to frenzy. Beware, foul demons and right. Beast. I, I need a second weapon. Let me go get weapons. Greetings. Yes. Okay, so we'll go buy two weapons. Oh, we already had two weapons. Just kidding. So I want to use the double swing animation. But I want to be using Frenzy. So let me make sure I got it. Yep. So you can see right here. I am now using Double Swing, which is a super fast animation. It does have a little lag on it. But I'm double swinging. So I get the really fast attack of the Double Swing. Which is insanely fast. But then I also get the frenzy speed. 
So that is super helpful on this character, right? As opposed to if I just use Frenzy, let's wait for Frenzy to come off, right? It's a little bit slower, right? That the attack speed is just slower on it. He, he takes his time as opposed to double swing, which is super fast attack. You tried bear swap cast mall and it broke when slowed as well. So you have to go slower if you do get slowed. That is the thing. You need to like do a little bit slower. You can't go super fast. Um, so that's the barbarian. The paladin, like we said, hammers and charge. We already went over that. The sorceress is one that we don't swap cast in the game for it, but it's one that you can swap cast later on. So let me actually get a different source. I don't want to use that one. Um, don't I have like a 99 source here? There we go. Uh, so what you can okay. do, because one thing that people know is that lightning actually has a different speed, right? So lightning is different from your regular cast speed. Watch. Cast, 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 cast. Cast, 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 right? So lightning is actually slower. So what you can do is you can actually do this. And now you're shooting lightning off, but you're shooting it as charged bolts. And I can even do it with fireball just to be firebolt to be a little bit better for it. So you can see that this isn't a firebolt. This is a lightning. But now, I'm using the speed of Firebolt. So that's a way to be faster. Now the problem you run into when you get into things like Frozen Orb is that you're going to have... Um, oops, I want to do this. XZ. Is that it's it still has a cooldown frozen orb still has a cooldown even when you're doing it like this So I'm shooting a frozen orb off But there is still a cooldown on it So it, it's not I, I don't believe it makes it any faster for cooldown skills um, And same thing with blizzard, right? So there's some weird interaction there, but I don't think it actually speeds up. Let me take that text off now. Um, okay, so that's the sorceress. And then the druid is the final one. And the only swap casting that really gets done on the druid, I suppose there could be some for like a, uh, you know, werebear form or something like that. Um, but... The only thing really on the druid that we do, where's my 99, there he is, um, is you can do a swap cast for like casting fissure. You can make it a little bit faster if you, if you change that and swap cast that, just like a regular cast like Firestorm or something, I think. Um, that's something I saw Ryu doing a little bit. Uh, I haven't played around with it very much. But otherwise, I would imagine there's something with, like, werebear and things like that um, that you can mess around with a little bit. But for the most part, maybe, like, Fury. Because this is going to be multiple hits, so this is probably that same thing, right? Five hits for Fury. Maybe so even go werebear. Oh, oops, no. Right? It's just so many hits. So let's go over and go to something that hopefully takes a couple hits to kill. Supernatural is strong here. Where is the monster? Look at this. I can't move out until that's done. 
I can't click. Look, I'm clicking. I can't move until all five hits are done. So why would you ever want that? You never would. So what you do instead is you swap cast it. Oops. Uh, Z for Fury. Yeah. And I got that backwards. Uh, X, Z. And now... This, hit, this is doing all of my hits. I'm out of mana. But this is Fury for all of my hits. You can see it's taking mana. But I can move away whenever I want. So I don't have to worry about getting stuck, right? I'm hitting, I'm hitting, I'm hitting. So I don't get stuck in that. So it's a way to abuse that. Bender showed me the table that shows the frame the spell goes off. So if your swap cast attacks faster than that frame, you kind of put yourself into hit recovery. Yeah, you definitely have to be careful with that. Are you still animation locked with zeal if you swap cast on a paladin? You are not. So once again, this is it's the same idea as fury, right? You're wanting to avoid being s stuck right there. Let me get a different guys. Right, so same idea. Here is a zealot, and he has five hits. I don't want to be locked in at five hits, because five hits is miserable, right? So, she can be here soon, yeah. Right, because this is, oh, how awful is that? So instead I do this. And we go this way. And now, I'm hitting, I'm doing all of that, right? Look how many times. For, you can see all the hits going off, but at any point I can run away. Right? I, at any point I can run off, so I don't ever get stuck in it. So, that is is swap casting and that is the uses of swap casting on every character you cannot booster that is the uses of it on every single character